Welcome to the podcast that's been named one of the best in marketing research. This is Research Business Daily Report, which is made possible by our exclusive community at the crowdfunding platform patreon.com forward slash rbdr. I'm Bob Letterer for more than 25 years, the respected voice in market research. First of all, we hope everyone had a comfortable and more importantly, even than that, safe weekend. We continue our series, Market Research in the COVID-19 Era Today. This is RBDR episode number 13. If ever you have thought, even considered sending any of our reports from this series to someone else, well, it might be today's. How research is dealing with the coronavirus situation is on everybody's mind in our industry. But how any member of our research world has had to combat his personal coronavirus attack situation, well, that's hard to find, but we have done so. And we have that person for you today. He is i Square Chief Revenue Officer Ephraim Jeff Bender, who came to our attention a few weeks ago. And we were fortunate to coax him to speak with us about what I can really best describe as a torturous situation in March and in April. Ironically, it seems as if Jeff may have been exposed to the virus while attending a research conference in his backyard. Jeff? I was first stricken, I believe, after the Quirks event uh, in Brooklyn. Uh, it was the next week when I, I think that's when I really started feeling uh, something's wrong. I think Quirks did a really good job. Um, literally everywhere you went, you saw um, the uh, hand uh, sanitizers, literally everywhere. Um, most of the people who were meeting people, they were touching maybe an elbow or bowing. Um, I, I think it was, it was very unique because, you know, you go to these conferences and there's a lot of uh, shaking hands and people seeing, you your, from, seeing people from other parts of the world and other parts of the country that they haven't seen in a while. So I, I think they did a really good job. And it was very early. I think it was the first week in March, so I think it was before the six-foot rule came into effect. It was just that it was in the news, and I think they did a really good job, really. My early symptoms at first, fever, quick. It came on very, very quick, and my bones, my back, and my legs just had pain that I never felt before, just, and it was constant, constant pain. Um, it was scary. The fever came pretty quick, um, 103, 104 uh, fever, and I was just really weak. The pain, um, for, it was about 10 days that I had pain, and what that meant was I couldn't sleep more than an hour or two. When then the pain came, it would wake me up, and uh, what would happen is I'd, get the, I'd, I'd be burning up, so I'd, get it, I'd be in bed most of the time, but I would cover myself a lot of covers and I was wearing sweats to sweat. And so I was changing my sheets for about 10 days every single day. Um, it was about 10 days before, and I would take Tylenol and I'd get up in the morning and feel like I'm starting to get better, but then it would come back. And it was like a roller coaster. Both of my legs, and my thighs, and the, uh, the, um, the lower part of my legs, the bones, it, it, you know, my wife was sick also, and she thought she was possessed. That's how bad the pain was. And my back, it was, it's hard to explain because I never had pain like this before. Typically, you have pain, you take a Tylenol, it gets relieved. This was just like constant, it was just pain. And, um, and the only reason I didn't go to hospital for it because I could breathe good. That was the main reason I never went to hospital because I still could breathe good. But it was, it's hard to describe a constant pain. Uh, and it, and it's not a gentle pain, like high level. Um, it's scary. It's, and it's, it's frustrating because there's nothing you can do. The episode of pain was about 10 days. The fever was about 18 days. Um, and I also, I wasn't interested in eating. I had no taste or smell, um, which is very unique for me because I like to eat. And I usually have a good sense of smell. Um, so I listened. I called different people uh, for advice. The one thing they said is to don't have cold, have hot. So I was taking hot water and cutting up garlic 
and putting apple cider vinegar. And that's what I was drinking and pretty kind of occasionally I'd eat a third of a banana to get something. But basically, uh, I lost 15 pounds. Little, little, uh, a quarter of an avocado. I never, I never ate a quarter of an avocado in my life. Um, but I knew I had to get some nourishment. It was, uh, not, not tasting is a very strange thing, too. Medications, um, I took Tylenol, um, but I was also taking uh, zinc, a large amount of vitamin C and D, uh, basically because I did my Google searches and they said that that would help. I was doing like 5,000 milligrams of C a day. We live in Crown Heights, Brooklyn, which is basically like ground zero. Brooklyn is. Our community is unique. It's the headquarters of Chabad, Lubavitch. And um, it's a really tight community. We have a lot of doctors who uh, are well-respected. And the leaders the, of our community are also well-respected. And they made it very clear to stay home. Um, and if anyone had to go out for emergencies, uh, you wear a mask and gloves. And the six-foot rule is really kept. Um, we really took it seriously. All the synagogues were closed. Um, very strange to see our community pretty much like a ghost town. Uh, and one nice thing that happened, there were about 60 young people who got a WhatsApp uh, group and offering to help get things for older people and people who, could, who had it and were sick. And we used it a few times because we, we couldn't really do too much moving. But unfortunately, we probably, since um, I would say second week in March, I probably have lost over 40 people. As Jeff did, we hope that you will continue to partner with us in this series by helping us collect unique coronavirus-related research perspectives. And we need you to be one of our really important resources. So jump in with your own point of view through an email to me, rflbob at gmail.com, and we will make it extremely easy for you to create your own commentary. That's your Research Business Daily Report made possible by our exclusive community at the crowdfunding platform patreon.com forward slash rbdr. The large number of research executives who watch us on a regular basis and have become rbdr viewers that we really appreciate has convinced us that the average five-minute video length of an rbdr is being perceived as time well spent. Now, even though today's video is a little bit longer than that, we think it is well worth your while. Thanks to Flex MR, which became our newest RBDR patron a couple of weeks ago. We much appreciate their support. And we'd like you to also join us with a monthly commitment, which I stress to you, needn't be anything of any great size. No monthly commitment is considered too small. So visit patreon.com forward slash rbdr and you can join our numerous other publicly appreciative supporters. I tell you that we're going to continue our series every Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday until the coronavirus is no longer a factor that is negatively impacting research. In the meantime, we're going to give you a lot of different perspectives about the good and the bad and what, be, could, what could be ahead for research. Have a great research day, and we will see you back here with us tomorrow.